The general idea of this cycle is that during prolonged intense physical exercises, skeletal muscles are working in oxygen deficient state. And in anaerobic conditions, the only source of energy is anaerobic glycolysis. So skeletal muscles uptake glucose from the blood, glucose undergo glycolysis that results in production of pyruvate. And because during intense physical exercises the amount of oxygen is low, pyruvate is converted into lactate. So why low amount of oxygen results in formation of lactate? Once skeletal muscles uptake glucose from the blood, initially glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate, then converted into fructose 6-phosphate, then phosphorylation occurs that results in production of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, and then fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dehydroxyacetone phosphate. Then dehydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and the crucial moment here is that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase that use NAD as cofactor to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, and this reaction results in formation of NADH. And if cell at this particular moment has enough amount of oxygen, then NADH is going to mitochondria, where it donates two electrons to electron transport chain and convert it back to NAD. And now glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase can use this electron carrier again in oxidative reaction. And electrons in electron transport chain undergo oxidative phosphorylation that results in energy production. Then, during glycolysis, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate through two consecutive reactions is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate, and then to pyruvate. And if everything works well, then pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA that then undergo degradation in Krebs cycle and electron transfer chain that results in production of energy. But during intense physical exercises, muscle tissue experience oxygen deficiency. And when the amount of oxygen is low, electron transport chain is not working. And the problem is that now without electron transport chain, NADH cannot get rid of electrons. But NADH anyway must be converted back to NAD, because there are a lot of enzymes in our body that use NAD as cofactor. For example, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. This enzyme cannot use for oxidative reaction NADH, only NAD. But in the cytosol we have enzyme, lactate dehydrogenase. This enzyme converts lactate into pyruvate and pyruvate into lactate. Everything depends on the amount of NAD and NADH in the tissue. So when NAD prevails, lactate is converted into pyruvate. If NADH prevails, pyruvate is converted into lactate. So because lactate dehydrogenase use NADH as cofactor, NADH molecules massively donate electrons to pyruvate, pyruvate is converted into lactate and simultaneously NADH are converted back to NAD. And now glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase at least can convert glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, and by this glycolysis is still going on. And it's a big deal because glycolysis is the only possibility for muscle tissue to produce energy in anaerobic condition. Obviously, the more intense a physical exercise is, the lower is the concentration of oxygen in muscle tissue, the higher is the amount of NADH, so the higher is the lactate production. And the problem is that lactate, also called lactic acid, is acid. And as any acid, lactate decreases pH. In muscle tissue, acidification impairs muscle contractions and manifests with muscle sore. Also important that muscle tissue without sufficient amount of oxygen cannot do anything with lactate. So lactate is released from muscle tissue into the circulation, and lactate concentration in the blood must be strictly controlled, because lactate decreases blood pH, so accumulation of lactate in the blood is very dangerous. Also, the more intense and prolonged physical exercises, the higher is the glucose uptake by the muscle tissue. And it's very important to maintain normal blood glucose level. And the major organ that regulate blood glucose level is liver. So in this condition, to compensate massive glucose uptake by the muscle tissue, liver have to provide massive glucose production. And the substrate for gluconeogenesis is pyruvate. So there are two problems. Lactate must be cleared from the circulation, and also liver have to provide additional glucose molecules. 
And there is a very simple solution. The concept is that liver can uptake lactate from the circulation, and liver tissue in contrast to muscle tissue has sufficient amount of oxygen. Thereby NAD substantially prevails over NADH. And because of that, lactate is converted into pyruvate. And pyruvate is a direct substrate for gluconeogenesis, so liver use pyruvate for glucose production. And then liver releases glucose into the circulation, and by this liver maintains normal blood glucose level. So because liver can utilize pyruvate in a useful way, liver is a major lactate consumer. So production of lactate by muscle tissue, and uptake of lactate from the blood by liver tissue, and production from lactate glucose is what we call Cori cycle. This cycle becomes substantially activated only during periods of intense physical activity. And important that Cori cycle cannot be maintained for a prolonged period of time because this cycle wastes energy. The anaerobic glycolysis in muscle tissue produce only two ATP molecules. Liver use six ATP molecules to produce glucose. So each time organism wastes four ATP molecules. But the benefit of Cori cycle is that during intense physical activity, liver tissue helps muscle tissue by providing additional glucose that undergo anaerobic glycolysis with production of two ATP molecules. So basically liver provides two ATP molecules for muscle tissue. So during physical activity by Cori cycle, liver energetically helps muscle tissue. Also because liver uptake lactate from the blood, we can say that Cori cycle prevents lactic acidosis and important that metformin that is used in treatment of diabetes inhibits gluconeogenesis in liver tissue. This results in decrease in lactate metabolism in liver tissue with subsequent accumulation of lactate in the blood. And accumulation of lactate results in lactate acidosis, which is a well-known side effect of metformin.